Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my talk in slot C. Today I'm going to talk to you about mnemonic illustrations, but I've cleverly disguised it as a Tumblr talk to get you to sit down. Um, before we start, can I take a quick poll? How many people here use social media? So that is almost everyone. Um, how many of you use Facebook or Twitter? And how many of you use Tumblr? A lot less people use Tumblr, but it's something that's increasing in numbers every day. If we take a look at the results in the general population, we can see that of 18 to 24-year-olds, this is people in university, that 98% use social media. So there's a lot of information being transmitted this way. And if we look at a younger age range, so those in high schools, those in colleges between 13 and 18, around about 60% still use social media. So even in high schools, there's a lot of information that we can, we can give students through social media. And scarily, about a quarter under the age of 10 are on social media. I'm not sure what kind of social media they're using, but they're definitely using it. And um, well, when it comes to Tumblr, 150 million people a day use Tumblr. And what is it? Well, Tumblr is a blog site that tries to get away from big chunks of text, and it's mainly videos, music, or pictures, and it's pictures that I'm going to talk to you a bit about today. So Tumblr can include cute images like dogs, cats, or funny images, which is what most people, I believe, use Tumblr for, or the inspirational ones, which are just really corny, and unfortunately, these are the ones that are most relevant to education. So we'll, let's have a look at what effect this has on the brain and what effect this has on the average student. So Grady et al. found that when, present, when presenting participants with images, their humans can recall images much better than words. The participants were given 2,000 images, and they recalled 90% of these. When they were given words, they only recalled about 40%. So that is, images are a way to remember information. As for mnemonic illustrations, mnemonic illustrations, as, as I said, contain images and words. So a, non a normal image is a wolf. To make this mnemonic, we've added in K9. This sometimes encoding words so that they need more processing improves the, the recall. Barbara Erin said that by using words and images, we are in increasing the amount of retrieval pathways. So information is easier to recall and thus recall is recalled more. And Shrugs says that by adding an image to text, we're giving text more meaning, allowing deeper processing to occur. So this image <laughs> is from pictorialmnemonics.com, a website used by medical students. And they, they draw these things, they use words and illustrations, and they upload them to the website, where they discuss them, and they can help each other learn about different syndromes. As you can see, Herder syndrome is linked with poor hearing, so they've drawn so, some other earwax and um, get cloudy corneas, so they've drawn a cloud. So it's all about applying personal meaning to information using illustrations. This is a Tumblr style image, but it's a little bit different because we're not, we're not getting across anything cute, we're not getting across anything funny, we're not getting across anything inspirational, we're presenting key terms and facts with an accompanying image. Dretsky found that merely presenting an image with text will improve recall. And this, this image does not even have to be relevant to the text itself. As long as the image is memorable, emotional, and relevant, not relevant, emotional or memorable, it will improve recall. So a few years before Dretsky made this comment, Dretsky and his colleague Levine gave these images to participants. And it's unlikely that from that you'd be able to figure out what this image is about. Believe it or not, it's actually about US presidents. There was a different image per president. If you could figure out who this is, you're way ahead of me. Pretty sure it might be Roosevelt, as Heather said. Um, so they gave students these images along with biographical information. And in another condition, they were just given biographical information. The students in these conditions with the mnemonic illustrations recalled much, much more biographical information than those who just had the text. So we know that which be just being presented with a mnemonic illustration can improve recall, and that, have, that and making a, a mnemonic illustration will also improve recall. Where does this happen in the brain? Well, going back to 
McGreevy, we can see that activation occurs in the prefrontal cortex and the temporal parietal regions when we are processing words. When we are processing images, we, it's the medial parietal areas that are activated. So when we are presented a mnemonic illustration, so we are getting text and images, activation occurs in all these regions. And they, they believe this meant that we were encoding more information and that retrieval is more likely to occur. So, yeah, they found recall, but does this actually incorporate learning? Well, a man called Shaw found, suggested that it did. He said that re being able to recall and understand these key facts will help us with our understanding through the use of cognitive schemas. Cognitive schemas can be created and defined using mnemonic illustrations. So this little girl will have a schema for what a dog is and a schema for what a panda is. If she's going um, make creating and seeing mnemonic illustrations, her schemas for these two different things are going to be much more refined and she'll will be able to more accurately say what this animal is and why it's there, what it's doing. So what she'll suggest is that mnemonic illustrations are a founda foundation learning strategy. It's, it should be implemented to, to clarify information that can be later expanded and learned on. So Levine, after he worked with Dretsky, did a 20-year longitudinal study, and he found that these strategies like this are effective and produce, produce significant recall throughout primary, high school, and further education, and even found that these participants incorporated such strategies into their work environment and, were, and employers suggested that these employers, these employees were worked more effectively than those outside the study. So what are the implications? Bring it back down to social media and Tumblr. Teachers could possibly have a class blog. Um, these <coughs> blogs could be used so that they can be asked questions, they can check understanding, they can present students with mnemonic illustrations because they don't have to be created by the student. So the students could be looking at mnemonic illustrations before the class the next day, get a little bit of an understanding of what a topic is. So we're going into a class prepared rather than starting the learning in, in the class the next day. They can also set homeworks. As far as homeworks go, students can create their own mnemonic illustrations. So we're being presented with them and we're making them up ourselves. This will, inc this will mean that they can look at each other's so it, it's kind of a group learning, we learn off each other, um, reblog each other's images so that the good ones are getting more and more popular, pe they, people can see them. And even, they can even be liked and saved so that when it comes to revision, they have a good understanding of these co key concepts. And that's about it for that one. And as a side note, Creating mnemonic illustrations has been shown to improve active and independent learning, which has, a, has an effect on student confidence. So not only are we helping them learn, we are, we are encouraging them to be confident, active learners and giving them a better educational experience. So to round it up, we know that mnemonic illustrations improve recall, and this recall is a good foundation strategy for learning bigger concepts, understanding why things do what they do, and Tumblr can, and other social media can be used as a more casual way to present this information to students before they go to class or to clarify information once they've been. And to think about if these mnemonic illustrations have any relevance to you, see if you can remember the fact about the manatee. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions?